Finding the volume of a cylinder lesson 13.1b. Finding the volume of cylinders is similar to finding the volumes of prisms. We find the volume V of both a prism and a cylinder by multiplying the height H by the area of the base B. So V is equal to BH, that's our formula, volume is equal to base times height. The base of a cylinder is a circle, so for a cylinder, the base is equal to pi r squared, as pi is approximately 3.14 multiplied by the radius squared. Remember to use an approximation symbol when working with pi. Since we aren't using all the digits of pi, we're only using 3.14, so we use an approximation symbol. So for your notes, this is the volume of a cylinder. The volume V of a cylinder with radius R is the area of the base B times the height H. It's the radius of the base and its height. We do volume is equal to base times height, or because pi R squared will give us the area of a circle for the base, we can do volume is equal to pi R squared H. We use pi R squared for the base B. We can find the volume of this cylinder. We can see the height is 8 centimeters and its radius is 2 centimeters. Then round our answer to the nearest tenth if our answer has more than one decimal place value. We have our formula to find the volume. We substitute in 3.14 for pi. We know the radius is 2, so we're going to have 2 squared for r squared and the height is 8. We multiply the 3.14 times 4, we get 12.56. We multiply that by 8, we get 148 hundredths. We round this to the nearest tenth. The 8 tells the 4 to go up to a 5, and then it drops off. We have 105 tenths cubic centimeters, or centimeters cubed. Now notice it went from an equal sign to an approximation symbol. When we have the actual symbol pi here, we can use equal because this symbol represents every digit of pi when we use 3.14 is when we need an approximation symbol. Now this cylinder is laying on its side. We can see that the length of the cylinder is 10 inches, so that's going to be the height, but it's not giving us the radius, it's giving us a diameter of 8 and 6 tenths inches. The diameter of a circle is twice the length of the radius. Therefore, to use the volume formula, we first need to divide the diameter by 2 or set it equal to 2r. We have 2r for our diameter. That is 8 and 6 tenths. We can divide both sides by this coefficient 2 to get 1r. We know that the radius is 4 and 3 tenths inches. We need to Square that, 4 and 3 tenths times 4 and 3 tenths is 18 and 49 hundredths. We multiply that by the 3.14 and we get 58.0586. We multiply that by 10, which is going to move the decimal point over one space to the right. So we have 580.586 as 586 thousandths. To round it to the nearest tenth, the 8 tells the 5 to go up, and then the 8 and 6 drop off. We have 580 and 6 tenths inches cubed or cubic inches rounded to the nearest tenth. Now again, notice in the formula we have an equal sign, and then it moves to an approximation symbol because this pi symbol represents all the digits of pi, so it is equal. This is not equal because we're only using 3.14. So when we solved this problem just now, we used 2r is equal to d to find the radius. Then we used the 4.3 in the formula as 4.3 squared for r squared. Well, since the diameter is twice the length of the radius, we can write the formula as v is equal to pi multiplied by d divided by 2, the diameter divided by 2 squared. That's what we did here anyway. Then we multiply it by 10. That would give us 3.14 times 4.3 squared times 10, which would give us 3.14 times 18.49 times 10. We get the same answer as we did above, 
We just wrote the formula differently because we needed to divide the diameter by 2 in order to get the radius. Here we have a can. We can see the height is 5 inches and the radius is 3 and 1 tenths inch. We substitute the values into the formula. We have 3.1 squared. Remember, we're going to do these exponents before we do anything else, which is going to give us 9.61. Now, we could multiply these two together, but the commutative property of multiplication states we can multiply in any order and get the same product. So we can multiply the radius squared by the height. We'll get 48 and 5 hundredths. Then we can multiply it by the 3.14 and get 150.8770 inches cubed. We round that off. The 7 tells the 8 to go up to a 9, and then they all drop off. We have 150 and 9 tenths inches cubed, or cubic inches, when it's rounded to the nearest tenth. It doesn't matter what order we multiply these in. We could even do 5 times 3.14 and then multiply it by the 9.61. We'll get the same product. Now I want you to keep in mind to do all the math before rounding to the nearest tenth. When we do the math before rounding it to the nearest tenth, we multiply by all those decimal values and we'll get the correct answer. We have 580 and 6 tenths. If we try rounding to the nearest tenth, then doing the math, thinking it'll be easier, we're not multiplying by the full values. We would have 3.1 for pi and 18.5 for r squared. We would get 573 and 5 tenths. That's wrong. That's not accurate. We need to multiply by all the decimal values. Then when we have the final product, then we round it to the nearest tenth. We're now finished with the second part of the lesson. We're moving on to the last part, finding the volume of a cylinder in a real-world context. Have a wonderful day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.